Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the new comic book day preview video for June 12th, 2024. Uh, gonna get into it. Um, not quite as long as a list of a list as uh, normal, but um, still some interesting books. So uh, a lot of stuff to talk about. As always, we'll go over best covers, most anticipated reads and releases, um, the funky fresh new books of the week. And um, at the end, I'll give you my pick for spotlight key of the week. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's just jump into it. Like I said, a little bit shorter of a list than most weeks, but still some really good stuff. So let's jump into the covers at Cover Fire. So first pick for covers of the week. This is the Penthouse Comics number three. This is the Comic Corner Jenny Frizz and Virgin variant. So an exclusive. Um, Pretty hard to find. Uh, I, I honestly went to ch um, check this out right before I recorded this video, and I could not find it on the Comic Corner website. Not sure um, if it just sold out or something's going on with the website or whatever, but that's besides the point. I think it's pretty much sold out anywhere, um, all over the place anyway. So um, it'd be a secondary market pickup at this point, but really, really nice Jenny Frizen cover. Um, obviously pretty risque, but... Um, could be something to keep an eye out for because it's probably going to be pretty rare. Um, but I have seen them sell for somewhere around $70 already on eBay. So keep it in mind. But uh, it is a beautiful cover, though. Jenny Frizen's on fire, obviously. Uh, I think she pops up another time on this list as well. So, yeah, that's our pick for our first pick for a cover fire. And then next up, we have another exclusive. So this is Deadpool and Wolverine World War Three number two. This is the unknown comics Tyler Kirkham variant. Uh, just the it was kind of a weird week for covers. Just nothing was really sent out. There are some nice covers um, later on the list that you'll see, but normally I won't go with two exclusives for my picks of the covers. But these were two pretty nice covers, so I really uh, thought it was justifiable throwing them as the picks. So this is a Tyler Kirkham really nice Deadpool Wolverine. Um, cover i think this is there's you've seen a lot of deadpool wolverine covers recently obviously um with all the heat from the movie and stuff like that but i just really like this one specifically i thought it was really uh well done so there you have it. those are our two picks for covers and then we have a couple honorable mentions not many though so like i said it was a bit of an odd week for covers uh, first up we have for honorable mentions this is green lantern 12 cover a by zermonico uh, just a really cool, um, very beautiful Green Lantern and Star Sapphire cover. Uh, I love the colors on this. I love like the su like the sunburst in the background. Um, the green and pink play really well together. Um, so I just thought this one was really cool. It's nice to get a, a cover A on the list. Um, I haven't been reading Green Lantern. I've heard good things, though. So if you're reading it, let me know what you think. Um, but it's not a book I'm picking up right now at the moment. Um, but maybe maybe I should. And then uh, next up, we have Fantastic 421. This is the Scotty Young Big Marvels variant. Um, I'm not going to put all the Scotty Young Big Marvels variants on this list, obviously, but this one I really did enjoy. I think this is just a really cool um, thing cover. It was one of my favorites that I saw from the Big Marvels. Um, I, I told myself I wasn't going to collect the Big Marvels set, but I, I do like Scotty Young. Um, and I've, I've couldn't help myself. I've been picking up everyone, but this one specifically, I really enjoyed something about the bigger characters. I just think they're, it's just kind of funny. Um, and you know, it, it's just, everything doesn't have to be taken so seriously in comics. Um, whether you like Scotty Young or not, I can kind of appreciate what this is and just appreciate it for what it is. And, um, yeah, it's just it's just something fun. Like uh, I've so sometimes the comic um, world gets so bogged down with negativity, it can be a little disheartening <laughs> as a collector and something I do as a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. There's enough uh, stuff to worry about in the world. The comics and you know having fun with a hobby really shouldn't be one that we take, <laughs> I think, as seriously as some of us do. But to each their own, I guess. But I did really like this cover. There's also a really um, fun, like, uh, Hulk one that comes out this week. I just thought it would, it's fun to pair the two of them because um, the Hulk is very goofy, too, uh, the Hulk cover. But, uh, yeah, so there you have it for covers, guys. I will run through them real quick because there's only four this week. So at the Penthouse Comics number three, this is the Comic Corner Jenny Frizen Virgin variant. 
Deadpool Wolverine World War Three number two, unknown comics Tyler Kirkham variant, the Green Lantern twelve uh, cover A by Zermonico, and Fantastic Four twenty one by Scotty Young. So there you have it. Next up, guys, eagerly awaited, most anticipated reads and releases of the week. Uh, my first pick, I have Ain't No Grave 2 by Scotty Young and um, Jorge Corona or George Corona. Not sure. I think it's Jorge, but I'm not sure. Um, I really enjoyed the first book. Um, it, it's kind of weird because the last time I read this team when they were together was uh, The Me You Love in the Dark. And as much as I like that book, I wasn't you know raving about it I, I did enjoy it i thought the art was really nice i thought the story was pretty cool and interesting and unique um but i'm definitely enjoying this book more than that um and it's nice to see i i, I like scotty young's writing it's like it's nice to see him writing and not doing the art um but Hori corona's uh art in this um is really interesting. What, what I said about uh, the me you love in the dark. It was basically a very contained story. It all took place in one setting, a base, a house. Um, this story, some of the best parts of this story is the setting that it takes place in, and the landscapes that are um, drawn in this book are just gorgeous and fun and different and abstract. Um, that really caught my eye. There was it was it's a pretty good story too. I think it's something interesting as far as like a western is concerned. It's definitely kind of sad at certain points. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's this um, scene with the main character has to go on by foot at one point, and she's saying goodbye the horse, and it was just like this really interesting and emotional scene <laughs> between these two characters. I don't know. It just really got me. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the next issue. Um, it's, it's like I said, it's been good so far. So I'm excited for issue number two. And then next up we have Dick Tracy, number two by Michael Morecki, Alex Segura and Geraldo Borges. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm not a big Dick Tracy fan. I don't know too much about the history or anything like that. It was a movie when I was younger. It's not something that I'm immediately like, Oh, I have to go out and get this book, but I was interested in it. I had heard good things. Um, so I wanted to give it a shot. I, and I really did enjoy the first issue. It definitely has this kind of like old school gangster detective vibe to it that I think they were trying to hit, which I think they do a good job of. Um, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm hoping it kind of picks up a little bit in issue two. Um, it was a, it was a good read and, and honestly it got me interested in the book. I'm just hoping it can maintain and last. So, um, but the art was really nice. It worked really well. The covers have been really cool for this book, honestly, I think. So it's a really cool character design. I love the old yellow. So, but I don't, I, I feel like this is a hard book to make work. And it gave me hope in the first issue. So I'm excited for uh, issue two and I'll be picking it up. And we got a couple honorable mentions here um, Blood Hunt. This is the Red Band edition. I would only recommend reading the Red Band edition, honestly. Um, there's no reason to not read the red brand edition. It's not like too graphic or anything like that. If you're reading comics, it's not, it's something you haven't seen before in my opinion. So I'm not really sure why they did the two. I mean, I get it as like a selling point kind of thing, but in my opinion, the you should just be reading the red band edition. <laughs> uh, but this has been pretty good so far. The second issue kind of cooled down a little bit. I definitely thought the first issue was better than number two, um, but still good. And, uh, something i want to keep going with it's been pretty well um received as far as in the comic community as far as um the storyline and stuff like that a ton of tie-ins it's hard to keep up with all the tie-ins because there's just so many but the blood hump book itself has been good so i've enjoyed it and not currently reading avengers so it's nice to kind of almost have like an avengers book to read so i've enjoyed that um there is a featured cover i mean i do like this cover eh, with the vampire miles on it i think it's just really cool looking so I, think I really do enjoy the cover A, but um, I'd be remiss if we didn't feature the 1 in 25 Carlos Magna um, Bloody Homage variant. These books, the, the horror homages have just been going crazy for the uh, red bands. And until they cool down, I guess it's worth like noting. So like I said, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about it. I was surprised at how well issue two did with the horror homage. And as, until it stops, until it cools down, and, it, and who knows, that might be this one, but um, it's definitely something to keep an eye out. If you can find it for a reasonable price, it makes sense because they've been doing so well, but that's up to you. I, it's not something I was really looking into, 
honestly. I like the or the first one, the issue one with the Thor um, severed head cover. I thought that was cool. Remind, like They had done an homage to similar to that, the Wolverine uh, horror homage that they did. I forget what book it was and what year it was, but there was a similar homage with um, a Wolverine book where I think it was a saber tooth head that was severed homaging that same book so um i was kind of surprised to see how well they're doing but like i said they're on fire so if you see it and it's a reasonable price probably worth grabbing <laughs> and then we also have transformers number nine by daniel warren johnson Jorge corona and mike spicer um <clears throat> just obviously loving transformers loving the energon universe transformers is a very um emotional book though as far as like the other ones are just kind of fun. I feel like they're, there's a real weight to Transformers, though. It's kind of interesting. The whole storyline with uh, Carly and RC, the female lead and the female Transformer, um, it's just really interesting. They, it's, it's, there's re really some, like I said, some emotional scenes, emotional parts with Optimus and Spike and you know, Cliff Jumper when he's kind of reminiscing about Bumblebee. It's just... Uh, it's just been really good. I absolutely love this cover as well. I there was another cover we were going to feature because there's a, there's another good uh, exclusive cover featuring Soundwave by uh, John uh, John Jang, but I didn't want to take away from this cover because I just think this is an amazing Transformers cover and borderline iconic Transformers cover. I could really see this um, being a big not like a big book that will you know gain a ton of like uh, value or anything like that but i just think this is a very iconic image and uh it's just really cool i love it i love the white back i like like the all white background uh the cracking earth it's just really, really awesome cover it would have been featured this isn't such a good read this would have been featured as just a cover because it's that good um by daniel warren johnson so there you have it and then i think we have one more and it is Ultimate X-Men number four by Peach Momoko. I know this book is starting to get a little bit of a mixed reaction. I've really enjoyed it. I know it's not everyone's thing. I do like Peach's art. I like the storytelling. I like having this kind of fresh um, new characters in an X-Men book. And I and I know it's, it, it's hard to say that it's an X-Men book. I think the last issue was the first time they actually said the word mutants. Um, so, you know, take it for what it is. Obviously, like if you're if you're really looking for what you think of what an X-Men book would be, obviously, this might not be your thing. I've just enjoyed the book. I can remove myself from the title and just enjoy the book for what it is. And I enjoy reading it. I've had a good time reading it the last couple of weeks. I mean, the last couple issues. I like the May Storm character. I like the main character. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I do enjoy this book. So um like I said, I know it's kind of a mixed thing. It's not everyone's thing, but that's what comic collecting is. It's all subjective and to each their own. So I'm going to keep reading it. And as long as I'm liking it, it's probably going to pop up on this list. So that is our eagerly awaited car uh, category. <clears throat> Next up, we have our Funky Fresh category. Uh, it was kind of a tough week for Funky Fresh and most anticipated titles. I tried to pick, pull some books and see what I could, but nothing, just nothing was really spiking my interest all that much. I did really... Um, Obviously, we're getting a Scarlet Witch book, which is it's on the cool main Marvel character getting their own uh, book is, is a big deal. So we wanted to feature that. So Scarlet Witch number one by Steve Orlando, uh, Jacopo Kamanji. I'm, I'm, I know I'm butchering that. I'm really sorry from Marvel. Um, but one of the biggest things about this book are the covers. Um, Scarlet Witch is a great cover character. It's really hard to do bad Scarlet Witch uh, covers. There's a ton of exclusives for this. Um, this cover A is is beautiful. I, I can't remember who who did the cover on this. No spacing. Um, but I, I really like the cover A. But there's also a Jenny Frizen. So there's a Jenny Frizen trade dress. And then there's a 1 in 100 Jenny Frizen, which is the one we featured. Um, the last time there was a Jenny Frizen 1 in 100 was that uh, Spider-Gwen that was doing basically double ratio. Um, so... It's probably going to be a hot book. I, I, the Spider Gwen kind of caught me by surprise. I thought it would be, um, a hot book. I was a little surprised at how hot of a book it was. Um, and with me, I'm okay with grabbing the trade dress on some of these. Um, but like I said, if you could find it for a reasonable price and you're something, it's something you're looking for, then it might be worth grabbing. 
Um, but we want to feature it. It is a really beautiful cover. Jenny Frizen, like I said earlier, has just been on fire. Um, and just all over the place. I love her range of books. It's just, it's DC and Marvel and Vampirella. And it's just all over the place. Penthouse this week. Like, just all over the place. And you kind of run the risk of being oversaturated with it. But when the art is as good as it has been um, from her, it's kind of hard to say that. So, And then we do have one honorable mention for Funky Fresh. And that is Lawful Number 1 by Greg Pak, Diego Galindo, and Irma... Caniva? <laughs> I'm just butchering names this week. So sorry. Uh, from Boom. Um, it sounded interesting. Like I said, there wasn't a whole lot to choose from. It, see, every I'll go into all the books that are going to be uh, new new books for the week um, as far as like new titles. And I normally have an overabundance of stuff that I'm really looking forward to. And don't get me wrong. There's probably stuff i'm missing and stuff that's gonna be good that i overlooked because it just didn't really pique my interest um this one it was kind of borderline <laughs> as it was um it does sound pretty cool um it's about i guess like two siblings it's kind of hard to understand exactly what it's about um it seems like kind of almost like a fantasy type world um it was kind of giving me saga vibes but i i have no idea so i'm gonna but it's something i'm gonna check out and uh Take a look. Boom has been really good with their books lately, so I'm going to give it a shot. So, like I said, the list was just kind of like all over the place this week. It wasn't really solid. <laughs> like it was, it was a weird week. I'll just put it that way. So, and then next up for our spotlight key of the week, which also ties into this weird week, is um, Giant Size Daredevil number one. The key significance of this book supposedly is the debut of new Kingpin powers. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, someone who's probably a little bit more familiar with the current runs of Daredevil might have a better idea. Um, I just thought that was an interesting note for a key, new Kingpin powers. So who knows? Like I said, it was not the easiest to come up with a key this week. This is borderline. So take it for what it is. Take it as it is. And uh, yeah, there you have it, guys. So let me just get out of this. Yeah, it was a it was an odd week, kind of piecing together a list here and there. I mean, some of the stuff is um, is going to be interesting. Um, mostly, mostly the reads is really the one we're looking forward to. Ain't no grave, Transformers, Ultimate X Men. Um, that's stuff I'm excited to pick up. So, and Blood Hunt, Blood Hunt's been fun. So, uh, so yeah, there you have it, guys. Um, yeah. You know, it's been fun doing this list. Uh, I got a whatnot show. We're back on whatnot. So we're doing Friday night shows, late night Friday night shows. So if anyone's around, check those out. Um, we have our very first Renaissance Fair that I'm going to on uh, Saturday this weekend. So I'm looking forward to that, going with a bunch of friends. Never been to a Renaissance Fair. So I'm excited to check that out. There are a couple concerts coming up. Um, Garden State Comic Fest. Uh, so a bunch of cool stuff. So keep you posted on that front. Make sure you're following on uh, Instagram, uh, whatnot, YouTube, all that good stuff. So hit the like, subscribe, and uh, happy hunting, guys. I'll see you next week.